Welcome to Follow the Brand TV. I am your host, Grant McGaw, CEO of Five Star BDM, a five star personal brand and business development company. B for brand, D for development, and M for masters. Today, I'm going to take you on a journey through another deep dive into the world of personal branding and business development using compelling personal stories, business conversations, and tips to improve your brand. By watching the Follow the Brand TV series, you will learn how to differentiate yourself from the competition and build trust with prospective clients. As the saying goes, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. So make it one that will set you apart, build confidence, and reflect who you are. Building your five-star personal brand is a great way to improve your skills and knowledge. If you have any questions for me or any of my guests, please email me at grant.mcgaw at fivestarbdm.com. Now, let's jump into our next episode on Follow the Brand TV. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another great episode on Follow the Brand Podcast. I am your host, Grant McGall, and today we have Shannon Everbush. He is going to show me what is going on at Prime Video at a very high level. He just moved down here from New York City, I believe about four or five months ago. He reached out to me and said, Grant, you need to come by my studio. I've got something to show you, specifically around... You know, digital signage, things that you can do from a digital perspective for healthcare, especially healthcare hospitals, in which they need to have more than just that dry look in, in the lobby, what's going on even outside. When you're like, what's your digital signage look like? And there's probably nothing there. But if you want to see what the possibilities will look like, we're going to have a conversation with Shannon. He's going to tell us what's going on in his world and what can be done at a high level. So without further ado, bring it up, Shannon. Thank you so much. Absolute pleasure to be here. I, uh, you know, it's not long ago, LeBron James once said, you know, I'm taking my talent to South Beach. And uh, not to say that I'm the king, but I, I sure as hell love being here. And um, I think the dynamic is such here is that it's not just about being healthcare for us in Florida, being you know one of the powerhouses in the US for healthcare here in the state of Florida. But I think it's a climate and it's a setting that really breeds uh, natural health as well as medical health. And um, the air here quality is good. The lifestyle obviously is good here. And uh, pleasure to share that with you, Grant, you know, that experience. Well, pleasure is all mine. Uh, again, I'm, now we're recording this right in the studio at Prime View. He invited me up. Walk me through the showroom. I'm impressed. I mean, he invited me up even a few times. He said, Grant, you haven't seen a football game until you've seen a football game at Prime View. And he's invited me up to the Dolphins game. Unfortunately, I was actually going to the game at that time. But I am here, and he's got a lot of different digital structures that we're going to talk about. So my first question I want to ask you, Shannon, is what's your key objective for selecting a Prime View digital solution for a healthcare facility? So I think that's really a loaded question that needs to be unpacked. But I think if I were to really take a little bit of a, a different approach to this, I think it really depends what you're trying to accomplish. I think there's going to be certain spaces within a healthcare facility that maybe it's during a Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening, and you want people just to enjoy the game. And there could be environments such as that in, in, in a healthcare environment that you want to make people feel like they're not in a hospital right? Or not at a, you know, a cancer center. And maybe this is the right distraction, right? And there could also be other instances where perhaps you want to create an experience of a different sort where you want people to more like feel like, you know what? I really want to feel like while I'm maybe at Nationwide Children's Hospital at the moment, maybe I want to take that patient into a world of feeling like we're at the beach or the water or the waves. So what it really comes down to is what you're trying to accomplish. And there's so many different ways of doing signage. And you know, historically speaking, a lot of signage got done in the simple ways of what's known today 
as LCD. And LCD is a very economical way to do that. But I think even as you move around to different types of environments, right? There's environments where throughout the age of, age of, age of time, really, or the test of time, so to speak, is that people wanted to have like an interactive experience of sorts where you can go and do wayfinding and take a good look at different things inside of an environment. And maybe even if it's a children's hospital, maybe even make it interactive where there's games. You could click and you could go there and go there and go there and have all these different experiences. But when push comes to shove, really, if you ask me, a lot of the experience has to be around who the market is, who the client is, and what they're really trying to do. Because sometimes going big or going home is a mentality that can work. But this may work for a hospital inside of a lobby or wow factor, but that's maybe not for everybody. So in short, what kind of, what kind of solutions work really varies on the application because in some healthcare environments like we spoke about a few moments ago, there's certain things that from an object, objective standpoint, a CEO, a CIO or CTO may view things differently versus perhaps donor marketing or marketing personnel may say, I have a specific donor in mind that says, I want my name on the building. And if that's the case, maybe digital is not for you. But in other instances, maybe you want the space to come alive and have multiple donors have an impact on the space. And that's where digital really comes into place. Man, that's, that's fantastic. You just showed us some uh, digital uh, realities that you can do to actually change the, the mood, change the, the uh, attitude, change what's going on in a healthcare setting. I think that's wonderful. Now, tell me just a little bit more about Prime View and how this whole thing got started. And, you know, I think you said you just, tra- you know, you, you just came from New York and you came to Miami, but give me some background on just who Prime View video really is. Sure. So Prime View um, at its very core is an Israeli born company. And as an Israeli tech company, um, we do more than just create our own technology. We, are, we also partner and develop and do research and development with other partners. So today, PrimeView at its core was hardware. Today, we're hardware and software because that's where the market is going. And really to take things to the next level, which really applies a lot to healthcare too, is content is becoming such a big part of this puzzle too. So a lot of what I showed you a few moments ago, it's the hardware, it's the software and it's the content. So when we started 20 plus years ago, you know, being that so much of our executive team is ex-Israeli Air Force, Navy SEALs, military of sorts, we started in command and control, evolved to the broadcast studio, having broadcast quality for the ESPN, ABC, Tribune, Hearst, Sinclair's, NBC's, Fox's of the world. But then as we evolved into healthcare to facilities like Mount Sinai in New York City or North Shore LIJ, now known as Northwell, we went from spaces that were about signage and training and hospital training or healthcare hospital training to now it's about the impact that you could change the space. And in the new world of today, the new normal, so to speak, it's really about creating a space that doesn't always feel so sterile. It feels alive, right? Having a living wall and a digital space changes everything. So Prime View, while our core competency is hardware, we've evolved to sell and to develop software. We've evolved in developing and deploying content as a package so that today we can really deliver in healthcare a wow factor, a really you know, pivotal shift within a healthcare organization so that it's not just about having a big display in the lobby. Anyone can do that. Today, it's about how to change that lobby to make it live within the space and have its own organism so that when you walk by a dynamic video wall, maybe it says your name because it knows your credentials. Maybe it walks by and all of a sudden you see a living tree start coming out because they see you're between the ages of 20 and 40 or different contact between the ages of 40 and 60 talking about long-term healthcare plans, a different way of looking at healthcare within organizations. So while we started in hardware, went into software, now went into content, We've evolved with the industry of healthcare to make sure that we're not just a piece of the pie. We're helping change the way you look at healthcare spaces. And that, from what I'm hearing here, because I'm, I'm wild, you got the wild factor working, right? I'm seeing artificial intelligence 
embedded into the video display experience. And what you just stated, like if I'm in, going through a hospital stay, then my experience with your digital walls can be different from my 12 year old or my six year old, or maybe even my wife or my elderly uh, grandmother who might be there. I think that is cool. You'll be so interactive with that uh, particular display that you kind of forget about some of the you know, concerns and worries that you're going through at a hospital stay. So now you've got my attention. And one of the key things that happens, and I work a lot in the hospital industry, is budget. You've got to have and justify a spend. So what advice would you give an executive needing a digital sign and solution, but has budget constraints? So I think to answer that question goes back to what I was showing you before. So I think when you really think about different technologies, right, each technology can just solve a different budget concern. So what I really mean by that is the following. If you're really trying to solve, you know, a wow factor on budget, well, in that instance, LCD video walls, right? These thin bezel displays can be just perfect for that because it gives you a nice wow factor and it doesn't necessarily cost a lot of money and it can do just that. But if you're able to play with the furniture of the space and create an environment where you know where the viewer is gonna be, you can get super creative and say, you know what, this is good, but I want bigger. And that's where if you get creative, you can really do some really impactful stuff because you can get a large, large screen and create a dynamic wow factor for not a lot of money. So maybe inside the healthcare, I guess you could say the educational side where you want to show medical slides, maybe this is more relevant, but, and you need to go at a higher resolution. But if you're trying to get a large wow factor, you can play with the resolutions to get something that's good resolution, maybe not the highest, but still create that wow factor. So it really comes down to what you want to show on the display. If it's just, you know, a donor wall, Robinson and Shaw family, no problem. You can do it on almost anything. But it really depends on how you want the space to evolve. What are you looking as a healthcare CIO or healthcare CEO or CTO to get out of this space? If it's just about having an impact, you can do that with paint, 100%. Forget about technology at all. But is that really what you want? Is good really good enough? That's a question only the donor marketing, CIO, CTO, and CEO level companies can answer. So if you have a shoestring budget, maybe digital is not the right approach, but you also don't wanna be left in the past like some other healthcare facilities that look like you have a lipstick on a pig situation. That's the only thing I would say to that. Well, and I agree with you because digital transformation is taking place in the hospital setting, right? You've seen it take place in the, in the hospitality, world, in the cruise world, and this is becoming the way that a hospital will engage with its patient population. They understand that they've got to have a difference, and what is that competitive difference that I can make right now and enhance the patient experience from the point of, of, of contact, the first contact, and would that, the first contact with the hospital system typically is going to be digital in the first place. Right. So then can, how do you continue that experience throughout the process? You know, most of the time, I, again, you know, you, you go to the hospital and depending on how you're getting there, what the purpose is, uh, but typically you're in a certain type of uh, uh, stressful situation. Uh, so anything that can be done to uh, alleviate some of that stress is going to be impactful. And there's a lot of different ways I can think of that you can utilize digital technology, whether it's in the, the lobby or it could be in, in some of the uh, office spaces, in some of the auditoriums, what is it you're, you're trying to uh, display? And perhaps you can even repurpose it for clinical purposes, depending on what it is that you're trying to convey. So I really appreciate that. And I see you as an expert in your field. And there's a lot of people out there just wondering, and I'm, I'm seeing this evolution in, in, in digital signage, and I'm calling it that, but it's more than that because you're seeing two-dimensional, three-dimensional. What I see, what our viewers can't really appreciate, you can't appreciate this on what you're seeing on this scale, but when I'm in that room and I look at it, it's four-dimensional. It's completely immersive, and that is wonderful. You don't have any gear on. You're not putting on you know, the 3D virtual reality glass. You, you're just in the experience. So talk to us about your expertise in this field. 
So I, you know, it's funny because one of the, so I, I study, um, you know, different Talmudic law on a daily basis and Judaic studies on a regular basis. And a lot of the Judaic studies I do is really about keeping your mind sharp, right? How to really train yourself a certain way. And it's interesting when I think about your question about how to really establish yourself as an expert in the field, I think it reminds me of actually one of the things I learned in uh, what's called a, a book called Ethics of Our Father. And it says, from all your teachings, you learn something. And the basic idea is, is that the more you expose yourselves, um, not from COVID, God forbid, but the more you expose yourself to different environments, right? And you put yourselves outside the comfort zone, ultimately the more that you learn that you could apply to different markets. And what's made me on a personal level to be somewhat of a Swiss army knife is because I've experienced control rooms. I've experienced broadcast studios. I've experienced arenas and stadium projects. And a large, you know, my ability to think differently is the fact that I'm not jaded to one specific vertical. So when I go for arguments taken to healthcare, I'm a very rare breed in the sense that I can share with you certain experiences about dynamic ribbons and stock tickers from the New York Stock Exchange or a, you know, a retail store on Fifth Avenue that's being adapted into a healthcare environment. And you're like, where did you get that from? I'm like, from a different experience. And, you know, the things that I share in financial labs is because of my background in finance. So a large, of my, a large part of my ability to be an expert in my field, quite honestly, is making sure that I'm A, not jaded, and keeping it fresh by coming from different perspectives on a regular basis, right? So today, earlier today, I was at a uh, community college in their healthcare facility, ironically. And I noticed right away that it's impossible for me to find out which building my meeting was at because of lack of digital signage, you know? And while maybe to a different generation, static signage would tell you where to go, in my generation of people below 40, when I go to a facility, if I don't see digital, I don't know where to go because static doesn't appeal to me because my brain is overstimulated on a regular basis with digital to the extent that when I don't see digital, I don't even know where to go. And maybe that's a bad thing, but I think if we're building the new hospitals or their healthcare facilities of the future and thinking that the status quo is good enough, well, guess what, Mr. CIO, CTO, and CEO? You're wrong. It's not good enough because it only appeals to a certain demographic. So as I look at to be an expert in my field, I want to not be jaded. I want to not be only known in a specific space because it keeps me fresh. That way I can go to any healthcare facility and, sh you know, and showcase or give a different perspective to show, show how a space can be adopted from a different perspective, not against the, what they have today. Meaning to say the following, when someone goes to McKinsey, right? Some of these large consulting firms, why do they bring them in? On a deeper psychological level, why do they bring them in? Because everyone in their, in their conference room or their boardroom today is a yes man. They're telling what their boss wants to hear. But when you bring in a consultant and give you a fresh perspective, all of a sudden, you start realizing different holes or cracks in your system, right? And you see how the ball has been dropped time and time again. It's the same thing to be an expert in any field. I think you can go and get a, you know, your master's and your MBA, you know, so to speak in that field, but ultimately it's about diversity and how you go and have different fresh perspectives that allow you to be an expert beyond what your resume says. Wow. You have packed a lot of information there, Shannon. I really <laughs> appreciated that. And I'm going to tell you, when I, I came here about a couple of weeks ago, and I was intrigued, you showed me a way to use digital in a whole new way that I was really blown away. You, you started out with this video, you showed me this really cool car. I can't remember. I think it was a, a Porsche or some kind of high-end Lamborghini or something like that. And you said, you know what, Grant, I had two weeks to pull this off. I had to go into a, a meeting uh, setting with a lot of different people, and we had to put on a, a digital display with very, very, very little uh, information and, and time to get it done. And then you went ahead and used your creativity, your ideation, and you said, you know what? I think I've got it. And you used some simple, like you said, static 
uh, uh, architecture that was in the room. I think it was only like three letters or something like that. Nice, you know, look. And you were able to overlay on top of that this completely immersive experience. It was it was incredible. It was really incredible. So my, my question is, how do you think digital signage can support the patient journey you know, from the entrance to the care room to the exit of the hospital system? So I think similar to the way that the building process works in hospitals, right? You can only build if the person's alive, right? So if the objective is to keep people alive, and obviously healthcare professionals want to build, they're in the entitlement, you know, they're entitled to do that. It's a business, right? I think then you have to think about what the patient experience needs to look like or what the journey needs to be, right? And I think part of that is to make them feel like they're actually alive. So if you're able to build and actualize revenue for someone's alive, in the same token, you want it to feel like they're alive. So I think what that means is you have to look at every step along the way and say, how do I change that experience, right? And I, I've seen many hospitals, like for example, Mercy Hospital in St. Louis, we were involved in a project not long ago, and they almost created their own innovation center, right? Because they wanted people to feel like they were not in a hospital. That was their design intent. So I'm just imagining, can you imagine the future where someone is going to a space and inside that space, there's a sports bar. What does that mean? Imagine you have a millennial who tonight, for example, is the college football game. And come this evening, he's pissed off that he's in the hospital with a relative that's sick. I know it's unfortunate, but that's the truth. That's how he feels. Imagine you have the opportunity to watch a big game and to watch some scores in the background at the hospital. Imagine. It's a sports book-like experience in a hospital. I don't think it's so far away to say that that's going to happen. In the same token, imagine if you had like an esports-like experience, a small-scale game room inside the hospital for that other generation, right? I don't even know which generation we're up to, millennial Y or Z at this point. I don't even know. But imagine you had a game system set up, obviously sterilized and cleaned on a regular basis, right? But something that appealed to the next generation. And then all of a sudden, their attitude is better for the next age. And that attitude is better for the next age. All of a sudden, they want to stay with their family in the hospital and make them feel better. So psychologically, I think that's a big part of the experience too. It's not just having a nice Starbucks or a nice Hallmark experience to buy some cards and flowers. And blue. Those are all important. But thinking about the real experience is making people feel alive. And a lot of that has to do with dynamic content for sure, right? And dynamic experiences. But I think it's innovation within the space. And that starts from digital signage on the exterior, right? When you're outside. So when you walk inside saying, how do I appeal to that guy? That guy that just walked in. And then utilizing other technologies like beacons and whatnot, once people have access on a regular basis, have them have their IDs and their credentials that follow with them as they move within the space so they feel engaged throughout the process. Tied to AI, data visualizations, and text messages, thanks so much for stopping in. You know, your, you know, your father is doing better today on a text message. Like, there's so much technology that you can integrate into the process. Wow. I mean, I, I don't say that even just in jest, but the W-O-W -W factor and what you're talking about, the lights are just all went off. You know, you talk about augmented reality. You're talking about you know, artificial intelligence. You're talking about digital transformation and the digital experience for patients, because that is the Disney experience, right? And that's what they're going for today, but it can happen. So the question is, how do you see the digital signage industry changing in just a couple of years? And how do you see yourself, Prime Video, Shannon, you know, creating that change? You know, it's very interesting. If you would ask me that question six months ago or of a year ago, I would say X, Y, Z. Today, though, I'd probably say the metaverse, as we know it today, is going to have a large impact on that, which means the same way that people are taking business meetings of the future and planning now for the future where there's going to be virtual meetings over Zoom and Logitech year like we have here today, I think the future of healthcare will also include, you know, 
that child that's in lockdown at the University of Hong Kong that can't come and visit the parent in California. And as a result, they may be putting on virtual reality, mixed reality goggles of sorts, okay? Let's say from Florida-based companies like Magic Leap and taking those goggles and dialing in virtually to their family member that's in the California hospital and sitting in that metaverse of sorts as if they're right next to each other. Um, that's not far away. So going back to your original question of how, you know, digital signage can support that patient journey from the entrance to the care room, I think the next few years is gonna be an extension of just that, where you think about that patient who comes in that front door, whether it be emergency room related or scheduled outpatient experience, through the entire hospital doors till they get their care, till maybe they stay connected, right? A part of brand integrity is staying connected. So the hospital that figures that out first of how to keep that patient connected, even when they check out, even when they have family that are in different countries, that's gonna be the winning solution because the same way that workplace technology right now is all going to a hybrid workplace. I think healthcare, I'm probably gonna be the first one to say it, but I think healthcare is going to that hybrid healthcare experience too. Uh, you know, and what you just said there is powerful. That's value. That's the number one thing hospitals are really concerned about. That is keeping their patients. That the patient, because of data interoperability that's taking place, uh, and the way it's exchanging, how do you, you know, maintain that patient? They could go from one hospital to another because their record will follow them. So you've got to be competitive in a whole different way. Kind of reminds me of what happened in the telecom industry when you know you couldn't port your phone number. If you remember, you might not remember that. You're probably a little, yep. a little younger, but but that's what happened. And they were very concerned. How do we maintain loyalty to our brand if that phone number could go anywhere? Well, you had to change, you had to adapt. You had to make it uh, valuable and impactful for that uh, particular client to stay with you. I think that the same thing is happening in, in hospitals, uh, that they definitely, what you just said there, when they leave the hospital, we want the experience to stay with you. We want you to you know, continue to, to interact with us because help, without help, you have nothing. And so we should be your partner, you know, as, as a healthcare uh, executive, uh, myself in the IT profession, uh, that, uh, that that's something that's intriguing to me. Uh, so I'm just not here waiting for you to get sick. I'm with you when you're well, you know, and, and that type of thing. So that that's very, very important. So at this point in the show, I always give my, my guest an opportunity. I say, come off script and talk to the audience. And I know when we had talked earlier, I said, uh, Shannon, talk to us, my audience, the, the Five Star BDM Network, as if, you know, I'm the CEO of a huge hospital system, and I'm looking for a way to compete. Now, you've given me some great intelligence. You've given, given me, you know, some understanding, you know, from a, a technological aspect, some of the finance aspects, why the patient should do this. But talk to me like sitting down, you want to do business with me. What would you want to tell me as a CEO of a hospital that you haven't said already? You know, I think it's, it's hard to really answer that question. But, you know, if I go back to those infomercial mindsets where, you know, the guy gets up and he goes, oh, you get one and you get one and you get one, right? Um, I think, or in the Oprah world of a give it away, right? You know, type of mindset. I think every single CEO has to think, how do I want to, you know, really lead my team moving forward in the over the next decade to transform my healthcare facility, right? And if the answer is you want to be number one, you want to be number two, I don't want to say number three is a loser, but if you want to be in the top five, let's say, of the facilities out there in the market, you have to be willing to take risks. You have to be willing to say, I don't know if this is going to work, but ultimately it's about the experience, right? That's the same thing with any business healthcare or not healthcare, how much more so if, like I said before, if you're in the business to keep people alive, all right, it's a business, then guess what? You got to make people feel alive. So if I'm the CEO and I'm the CIO or I'm the CTO 
Ultimately, I got to think, how do I make my space feel special? And it's not the furniture, it's not the furnishings, and it's not making things feel sterile and, you know, and, and, and just bacterially clean, so to speak, right? With, you know, hand sanitizer every five feet. That, that, that's not what it's about. Or having a content that says, did you wash your hands today? Or did you wear two masks or three masks? It's more than that. It's really a matter of how to make the individual in that lobby and that outpatient or inpatient experience come alive. So ultimately it's looking at yourself, looking at the mirror and saying, what do I want for my patients? And if the answer is I want my patients to know where they're going, guess what? You need wayfinding. If I want my patients to know why my hospital is special, guess what? You gotta create content that makes them feel special. And then lastly, you gotta integrate other technologies like software to say that when I leave, I go home with you. So I don't know if it's as simple as a one, two, three, but I think everyone has to look at their own brand identity and saying, well, what do I want for my facility, my institution, right? My university hospital maybe even perhaps too. And once you know the answers to that question, well, guess what? You know what you have to do next. You have to engage an IT, AV integrator of sorts. You may have to get, engage a AV or IT consultant. And you may have to get an interior design shop that understands technology, which is a rare breed, by the way. And all these things require collaboration at the highest level with the architect. Don't put the architect in its own you know, little silo and say, oh, design is beautiful space. That's not gonna solve all the problems. You have to have this collaborative team effort from day one. Like I have a project I'm working on in real estate. They didn't even put a fork in the ground. It's three years out from now. But we're here right now with bar napkins, sketching things out between the architect, the designer, the developer, all together. That's what's missing in healthcare to take things to the next level. Excellent, excellent answer, Shannon. This has been a wonderful, wonderful episode. So if someone wants to get in contact with you, what is the best possible way? Um, I would tell you first and foremost to move to South Florida. No jokes aside, <laughs> we have plenty of that, no worries. Um, if somebody wants to reach out to me on LinkedIn, C-H-A-N-A-N, -A -A -N, last name A-V-E-R-B-U-C-H, easiest way to get me. And aside from that, I uh, encourage you to take a look at our website, Prime View Global, and uh, take a look at what we do and uh, feel free to visit us and join us. We have a beautiful experience, ex experience center here in South Florida and Fort Lauderdale. We're about five minutes from Fort Lauderdale Airport and Grant could uh, take you, show you around a little bit. I would love to. Uh, that was one of the things I wanted to make sure because I tell you, and I, I, I know this now, Shannon said, Grant, you know, I could, we can do it over video. You can be able to, to see you know, the, uh, the different types of uh, technology that we have from a digital science perspective and what we can do. But until you actually walk the showroom, you will never really get the full experience. You won't be able to, the light bulbs won't go off in which I should say on, not off. They won't go on until you really see, you start to come do the composite between where you're at now, your current state and where you could be. And the different, types of things that you can invest in to make your experience more memorable. And as Shannon said, take it with you. So it's just not a one time event at your particular facility. So this has been wonderful. Thank you very much for being on Follow the Brand. And I want to tell everyone to follow the brand at www.5starbdm. That's B for brand, D for development and for masters.com. Till next time, take care. Bye-bye. Five Star BDM, Brand Development Masters, is a professional consulting and advisory group keenly focused on business development services for the small to mid-sized business and entrepreneurs. Although every business is unique, they often share business development challenges that can be addressed through smart branding. Services include process improvement and operations, digital strategy and transformation, business intelligence, digital marketing, and personal branding. Our business and personal branding company has helped a number of professionals and organizations to optimize and grow. This results in more business, more opportunities, better reach, positive outcomes. Visit www.5starbdm.com today to learn more.
Hey everyone, I want to thank you for watching this episode on Follow the Brand TV. Remember to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get our new episodes as they are released. Also, make sure to visit our website at www.5starbdm.com. Until next time, build a five-star brand that people can follow.